part. Oh, perfect timing. Just give me give me a couple. Okay, we are live. All right, so every Tuesday, we go live in about seven different platforms. So today we're going live on StreamYard in our Facebook, here on my desktop on our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. There's about se almost 71,000 of you in that thing now. We're going live in our Facebook business page, about 120,000 of you running in there. Our YouTube channel, LinkedIn, our personal Facebook. We're also going live here on the Instagram phone. I call this the IG phone. It's like the bat phone here. And we're trying to figure out how to flip the screen around. It's not working today where we can mirror the board back here. So you might have to read this backwards. And we're also going live on TikTok. Natalia, do you know how to flip that screen on TikTok? I'm going to have you flip the screen on TikTok. We didn't worry about you. We didn't forget about you on TikTok, guys. We just got to flip that screen. You're okay. All right. So today we're going to go over a very interesting subject that I know a lot of you struggle with. Now, I want you to, here's what I want you to do. Type in... If you ever lose sales because you get like an A-type personality. Now, when I say A-type, it's like an alpha personality. It could be male, female, and you just can't open them up. They're just staying surface level with you. You ask questions. You think they're good questions, but they just give you vague, generalized responses or like one or two word answers or three word answers. And then at the end, they say, I want to think it over. I need to keep doing more research. I need to keep looking around. Type in me if you ever lose a sale because you can't, you haven't learned yet how to open up A-type personalities, okay? Type in me. Be real with yourself. I'm here to train you how to do this, okay? I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of how to do this. I'm going to give you some different examples using your tonality. I'm also going to give you some different examples using what's called framing or rank or status framing as some people call it. And I'm going to show you that here on the vibe orb right behind me. Now, if you are brand new to the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, or you start to follow me on YouTube or the business page or LinkedIn, or maybe you start to follow me here on Instagram. We've got 440 some thousand of you follow me on here on Instagram right now. Or maybe you start to follow me on TikTok. We've got, I don't know, 100,000 of you on there or something like that. My name is Jeremy Miner. I'm the founder of 7th Level. Now, we're a sales training organization that trains salespeople exactly like you. So we train sales professionals like you. We train sales executives like you. We train uh, VPs of sales, sales management, leadership, coaches, consultants, business owners, entrepreneurs. And we train you and your teams how to use certain techniques, certain questions, and especially with your tone that actually cause your prospect to want to open up. How do you sell using techniques that work with human behavior rather than work against it? If you don't know what I mean by that, that means you're triggering a lot of sales resistance by the way you've been forced to communicate with your prospects. OK, now you want to start acquiring those type of skills. Now, that's called NEPQ. It stands for Neuro Emotional Persuasion Questioning, because we have to teach you the right questions, but we also have to teach you the right tone. Because if your tone's off, you're losing lots of deals that our clients who sell exactly what you are. They make those sales day in and day out like it's easy, okay? Because there's certain questions that require more of a curious tone. Uh, John, maybe can you walk me through what you guys are using now for your XYZ just so I have more understanding? It's a curious tone. There's other questions that require more of a skeptical, more of a challenging tone, okay? What are the ramifications if you don't do anything about this? See, that's more of a challenging or skeptical tone. Now, there's other certain parts of your conversation and certain questions you're going to have to learn that require more of a concern tone, a tone that shows more empathy. John, what's what's really holding you back from moving forward? That's a concern tone. Now, if we don't understand how to use our tone in certain areas of the conversation, that's one of the biggest reasons why your prospects stay surface level with you and never open up, A-types especially. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use that today, all right? Now, if I can figure out how to flip my screen here on IG, that wasn't working today. I'm not sure what's going on. We might have to just, you guys might have to read it backwards like it's Mandarin Chinese or something back there. We'll just have to see what you can do, okay? Now, 
you want to start acquiring these skill sets we're talking about. Because what I show you in these reels and lives, it's like 0.00000001% of the training our clients go through who are in your industry and our virtual training platforms and our group training by myself and our sales trainers. You wanna start making your first 10 grand every month in commissions in your industry. Or if you wanna start making 15 grand every single month or 20 grand every month with what you sell now, if you're an individual salesperson, or if you wanna start making 25 or 30 grand every month in commissions or 40 or 50 every month in your industry, or if you're in leadership, and you want your teams to start selling far more. So you start making more money yourself and get promoted. Or if you're the business owner and you want to start scaling your company to tens of millions of dollars or more every month, because we have tons of clients that are doing that now in your space, then message me directly. Okay. So if you want to make those type of that type of income, I just told you message me directly. So if you're on Instagram, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, the Facebook group, Facebook business page, my Facebook message me directly right now. Okay. Uh, if you can't figure that out because you're an old dude, you can't figure out how to message people and like social media like me, I can't figure it out half the time. Then in the comments section, post hashtag NEPQ. Post hashtag NEPQ. Either myself or one of my stunt doubles, one of my surrogates will message you some different training options we have for your industry if you want to make that type of income. One second. Anytime, make sure they're tagging people. I haven't seen anybody in the streaming or Okay. Now, nobody cares about me. You're selfish. You only care about yourself. You just want to sell more. So let's get into the training. Now, here's what I want you to do before we get into this training. All right. So I'm going to go about the next 15 minutes. Yes, the image on the board is inverted. It's backwards. Can't uh, IG's thing to flip the screen is not working right now. Just so you know. So you guys are going to have to read it backwards. Nothing else I can do right now. It's an IG problem. It just happened a couple hours ago on my phone anyways. All right. So if you're on the live right now, go to your phone. And I want you to post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, go post hashtag live. I better see hundreds of hashtag lives. I better see hundreds of hashtag lives. If you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. So if you're on the live, post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. Yeah, the double tap's not working. I, I do a bunch of these lives. That's it. Always, it's just not working. It's not connecting today for some reason. But it'll be working. Hopefully, we'll see if it works here in a little bit. All right. So post hashtag live. Just put the phone next to the mirror. Arrow up. All right. So hashtag lab, hashtag replay. And I want you to smash the heart button and smash the like button. So smash. I better see hundreds of smashed hearts. And I better see hundreds of smashed likes. I mean, just between TikTok and IG, we've got hundreds on here. Okay. Hashtag live, hashtag replay, hundreds of smash hearts, hundreds of smash likes. Otherwise, I'll just go golf here. It's only 109 degrees today in Scottsdale. It's not bad. All right. Now, let me move you guys over here. You're just going to have to bear with me, IG, because for some reason, uh, the flipping mechanism here on the IG phone is not connecting today. All right. So you're just, I'm going to do my best I can for you. Okay. Everybody else should be able to see that. TikTok. I'll move that over there so you guys can see that a little bit better. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you is about how to use your tone to get the prospect to let their guard down. I'm going to move this over here a little bit for you. Okay. Now your tone is how your prospects. So write this down. Your tone is how your prospects interpret the intention behind everything you say. Your tone is how your prospects interpret the meaning behind every question you ask. Okay. So if you come across and we're going to train you how to do this, if you start learning how to come across in your conversations, especially in the beginning, more neutral, more unbiased, you're not quite sure you can even help yet. You don't know enough about their situation. Okay. You come across more collective, more calm, like an expert does. I don't mean be boring, still be assertive and collective at the same time, like an expert does. Experts don't get overly enthusiastic and pushy and needy. Average salespeople get pushy, needy, and zealously excited because they're nervous. And when we're nervous, we tend to get really excited. We have a nervous energy. Your prospects, that triggers fight or flight mode. OK, so we want to come across more neutral, more unbiased in the beginning. We can be more assumptive as the conversation as we build a bigger gap, but not in the beginning, unless you want to trigger a lot of sales resistance and deal with a lot of objections. If you love doing that, then go for it. 
I just like easy sales. I like every sale when I was in the trenches to be really easy, not hard. Okay. I made hard sales easy. If that's what you want, we can show you how to do that. Okay. All right. So you want to come across more calm, more detached. That's the key word. What happens is that triggers in their brain so much curiosity that they want to engage. They want to open up to you because they feel like you might have something important for them. That's called disarming the prospect where they let their guard down. So write this down. How do you get the prospect to let their guard down? Even a type personalities. Okay. Now I'm going to show you this next here. So one thing I'm going to show you a technique, how to do this. Some of you might've heard of this. There's very few sales trainers in the world that have any type of background in behavioral science or social dynamics. In fact, there's less than the fingers on my hands here. And I've read pretty much every sales book on persuasion and influence in the world, almost 1400 at this point in the last 22 years, read or listen to the audios. So this is called what's called rank or what's called status framing. Okay. So anytime you come into any type of sales conversation as a sales professional, you have to get the prospect to view you within the first few seconds, at least as the same status as themselves. Now, how are salespeople typically viewed by prospects or society in large? Somebody tell me in the comments. They're viewed as a much lower status, right? If you watch any type of movie about salespeople or you read anything in the news that talk about salespeople, how do they view salespeople at large? Low status, like the worst people on earth. That's primarily because of the way salespeople have been forced to sell that triggers so much sales resistance being pushy rather than getting the prospect to pull them in. Okay. Which I'll, it's a whole nother training. All right. So if you come in and you sound like all the other salespeople, you sound salesy, you sound really excited. I didn't, I don't mean don't be excited about what we sell, but you got to keep that to yourself. Just because you're excited about the product, how would the prospect just be excited because you're excited? Do you get excited when a really pushy, excited salesperson tries to sell you something? You don't, do you? You're like, whoa, what's going on? Like, you're like, what's going on? You push back. Why do you think your prospects are doing that to you? They do the same thing you do to them because that's just human behavior 101, okay? So when we come across like every other salesperson that they talk to all the time selling anything, you're not the only salesperson they're talking to about everything. I mean, it's not like you're the only salesperson they've ever met trying to sell them something. We're talking about they've, they've had salespeople try to sell them anything from a vacuum cleaner to a car, to a life insurance policy, to cybersecurity for their office. I mean, whatever, an RV, you know, a home, okay, whatever. B2C, B2B, B2G, it doesn't matter. So if you come across using the same tonality, you come across pushy, needy, salesy, all that does immediately is do what? lower your status in the prospect's brain. That's why you get a lot of people. If you call outbound leads or cold call, like, oh yeah, we're good. We're in, we're not interested. Oh, we already have somebody for that. We already talked with somebody about that. You know, we don't need it. We don't have the money for that. You're instantly triggering sales resistance by your tonality and how you come across. Okay. Now let's go back to this. So when you come into that conversation, you got to get them to feel that you have at least as the same status as them. Now that's not enough for them to buy from you, but that's enough for them to engage with you initially and become curious about what's going on. Now, as you go through that sales conversation, that discovery call, whether you sell B to C or B to B, B to G or door to door, you're going to have some type of discovery call or a conversation, whether you're in person on the phone on zoom, it doesn't matter. But what you have to do is by your question ability and your tone is you have to raise your status in their mind. That's called situational status, as some people would say it. So even if you're selling financial services and you're calling on clients that are worth $2 billion and you're not worth $2 billion, you can still raise your status in their, pro in their mind, even though you're not as wealthy as they are by the questions you ask and how you get them to internalize from their answers and your tone. That's called situational status. So let me show you a few words and sayings that so many salespeople in every industry use that immediately lower your status in the prospect's mind that you probably don't know lower your status because your mama has told you they're really polite words. But in the business world, 
you are automatically lowering your status. Remember, you, you already have a low, as a salesperson in society, you already have a lower status in their mind regardless. So if you lower it even more by the way you come across as salesy and needy and too aggressive, you're just in for a bad situation, okay? So here are some words that lower your status immediately. Now, if you're on IG, you're just going to have to hear these words because the mirroring is not working on the phone today for IG. So you're going to see this like it's backwards, like it's Mandarin Chinese or something, okay? So words that lower your status. Hey, let's say that you're meeting them on Zoom or in person, B2C, B2B. And you say, hey, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to get on this call with me today. I really appreciate you taking the time to be on this call with me today. Now you think by you saying, I really appreciate you taking the time that you're being polite. But do you know how the prospect starts to see that? It immediately lowers your status because it means you view them, you view that prospect at a much higher status than you view yourself that their time should be respected, but not your time. And you immediately have lowered your status, even though you thought that was a polite thing to say. Now, I'm going to show you how to reword that, that actually it raises your status here in a second. But you don't want to say, hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to be in this meeting with us today. We're so excited to meet you and talk about our XYZ solution. You just lowered your status because it means you view them at a much higher status than you view yourself. And that causes them to view you at a much lower status than themselves. That their time should be respected, but not your time. Do you want your time to be respected? Or do you want your prospects to try to get rid of you all the time and have you chase and follow up all the time and treat you like crap? You're not going to make many sales doing it that way. I can assure you of that. All right. Now, let's keep going. I'm going to show you how to relanguage this. All right. I'm just warming up here. Okay. Here's another way you lower your status. I'm going to show you another one here that you're probably doing. Then I'm going to show you how to reword both of those. Let's say you have a prospect you initially met. Okay. It could be B2C, B2B, and they haven't bought yet. And let's say you set up another appointment and they ghost you. And now you've called them three, four, five times. You've left a couple text messages, emails, and they've completely ghosted you. Now, what most salespeople would do is they would send an email or leave a voicemail like this. Hey, Jim, I know we talked a few weeks ago about my solution and how we can help you with X, Y, Z. Can you please call me back when you have time? Can you please, please call me back when you have time? Now, your mama, because my mama told me that using please and thank you are very polite words. But all that does is causes the prospect to view you as needy and it lowers your status in their mind. You're asking them to please call you back when they have time? When you're the one that can solve their problems with your solution and get them where they want to be? You're asking them to please call you back when they have time? Well, you can if you want to lower your status. Do you really think they're going to view you as an expert who can get them their results they want when you're asked, like almost begging them to please call you back when you have time? You don't want to do that unless you want a lowered status. Okay. Now, how do we flip that? Okay. Now, here's in the same sentence here, I might email this. Okay. Now, if you're one of our clients, you've seen this in our training before. Okay. This is just a little nibbit. So let's say you can't get a hold of them. Here's words that raise your status. Hey, Amy, I called a few times last week and left a few voicemails, but we didn't hear back from you, dot, dot, dot. Then go down one line, because you don't want to make this in one paragraph. People won't read that. And say, where should we go from here? And that's it. No fluffiness. Don't add another damn word. And I want you to notice how quickly they respond to that email. Literally. Oh, hey, yeah, I just, I'm so sorry. I've been on vacation or, oh, I'm so sorry. My mom had to go to the nursing home and I've just been really busy. I meant to get back to you or, oh, you know, the firm decided to go another direction. But now you hear from them. They're not ghosting you. Now you can re-engage them because you know what's going on. 
Don't change the wording here unless you want to change the result. Hey, Amy, I called a few times last week and left a few voicemails, comma, but we didn't hear back, dot, 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 and then scroll down one line. Where should we go from here? And that's it. That communicates that you are not needy. You've got tons of clients. You don't need their business. You've got a solution that can solve their problems that they said they have and get them where they want to go, but you're not asking them to please call you back. You're just saying, where should we go from here? Okay. I want you to notice when you use this, start using it on your prospects that are ghosting. I want you to see how many more people respond back to you compared to what you're doing now. Okay. All right. Let me show you some other things that raise your status or should I just stop? Should I just shut it all down? It, like I said, it's only like 109 degrees here in Scottsdale. It's a really nice day to golf. Don't set that. The golf course is waste management golf course right across the street here from our offices. Should I go golf? Should I just shut it all down or should I give you a little bit more? You guys tell me in the comments, shut it all down, go golf or Jeremy, please give me more. I'm just going to go off what you guys say. Brett says, no, somebody on Facebook, more, more, more. What are you guys saying on IG? TikTok, more, more, more. I need more. No, I need more. Keep going. I can shut it all down. The golf course is right across the street. It's not too bad. More, please, more, please, more, please. Okay. Boy, Facebook and LinkedIn or YouTube are going off. Where's IG and TikTok? Well, IG, you can't even read my writing here. It's backwards, but the screen's not allowing us to flip today. All right. Now, I'm going to show you something else here. Words that raise your status. Okay. How many of you sell to multi, more than one person. Type in me if that's you. If you sell mainly B2B, sometimes you'll get this in B2C, but mainly B2B, okay? Sometimes you get it in BC. So if you sell B2C, pay attention because this could happen to you, but this is mainly a B2B problem. You get into a boardroom or you get on a Zoom meeting and there are six, seven, eight people. How many of you, type in me if that's you. You get on Zoom, six, seven, eight people, decision makers, influencers, or you meet in a boardroom at an office, there's five, six, seven, eight people, decision makers, influencers. Type in me if that's you. Okay. How many of you ever have like an overpowering business owner, CEO, department head? You walk in, there's all the people sitting there. They're not very warm and friendly. And they come in the big honcho and they says, hey, we've only got 60 minutes to hear your presentation. So if you can be brief, we'd appreciate that. And just leave some information and we'll get back to you if we're interested after your presentation. How many of you ever heard somebody come in there? Hey, we've only got 60 minutes to hear what you have to say. If you can just go ahead and get started and then we'll tell you if we're interested. How many of you ever get that? Okay. If you just say, okay, and go into your presentation, guess what you just did? Bam. Your status gone. Lowered your status. Immediately you lowered your status. So here's what you're going to do instead. I'm going to drink some water because I got to get the right tone for this. Okay. You paying attention? I'm only going to go through this once. So they say, hey, we've only got 60 minutes to hear what you got to say. So please be brief and we'll get back to you if we're interested in it. You're going to, you're going to look at your watch and you're going to say this. Now, this is important here. You have to learn tonality. That's one of the things that we train you as a client in our virtual training platforms, in our group training with myself and our trainers. Your tone your nonverbal skills, meaning your tonality and your body language, make up 73% of you actually making that sale. Only 27% of the words you use. So if you don't understand how to read their tone and you don't understand how to use your tone to get them to open up, you're losing deals every day that our clients who sell what you do, they make those same deals every day. That's why they're making two, three, five times what you are, even if you're already doing good. Okay. All right. So you have to use this in kind of like a playful, sarcastic tone. Hey, you know, we've only got 60 minutes. Can you go ahead and get started? Just be brief and we'll tell you if we're interested. You're going to look at your watch. Oh, geez, you guys must have a lot of time on your hands. I've got maybe 30, 35 minutes before my next appointment with ABC company. Should we go ahead and get started then? Now, what did I just do? I just changed that frame there. I just took back control. They thought they had control. Now, they didn't even know what they were doing. Okay, this is just social dynamics 101. Very few sales trainers understand social dynamics unless you have a background in behavioral science. There's actually only two others in the world that I even know of that understand that. Okay. 
All right. Oh, geez, you guys must have a lot of time on your hands. I've got man, maybe 30, 35 minutes before our next appointment with ABC Company. Should we go ahead and get started then? And you just flip that. Now, what does that communicate to everybody in the room? Wow. You just raise your status because that's what an expert would do. A salesperson would just be, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And go into the presentation. Oh, geez, you guys must have a, and I say that in a playful tone. If I don't say that in a playful tone, it's not going to land. Oh, geez, you guys must have a lot of time on your hands today. I've got maybe 30 minutes before my next appointment with ABC Company. Should we go ahead and get started then? And you're going to watch how their just arms relax. Like, and they're going to look at you because now they start to respect you. You might, they might need to pay attention to what you're talking about because you just took over that status. You just raised your status in their mind. Okay. Those are just a few techniques. Now, should I show you anything else? Let's see if I got anything else here that I wrote on the board for you guys. No, we're not going to talk about that today. Problem awareness. No. Um, oh, you know, one thing you can do. I'll talk about this here. Okay. So this is called an NEPQ problem awareness question. So this is a good way to get an A-type personality to open up. Besides what I just did there with raising your status. Raising your status opens up any prospect. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter if they're passive, if they're passive aggressive, if they're if they're a yellow, a, a orange, a white color, a blue color, what red color? You know, there's all these different personality codes. A type personality. It does not matter. What I showed you with status framing opens up any personality. That's why seventh level can go into any industry on the planet. 158 different industries, including yours, watching me, and we duplicate in every single industry because we understand human behavior. Whereas other sales trainers can only have any type of success in the industry they came from. And that's it. They don't understand human behavior. They don't understand social dynamics. You have the advantage if you're one of our clients, because we do. That's my background in college, behavioral science, human psychology. So if they tell you, like you get on the phone or Zoom or in person, and they tell you something they don't like about their situation. Let's say they're using a vendor or a company already for what you have to offer. You have a different service or product, but they're already kind of using somebody for that in this example. So this is a first problem awareness question. Now notice how I use my tone to influence how they interpret what I'm asking. I mean, I, I mean, guys, you've been using them for the past five years. I mean, it can't be all doom and gloom over there. What do you like about what they've done? Now, see what I just did? Rather than saying, well, what don't you like? Or what are your biggest challenges with XYZ vendors? I'm pushing them back. Like I'm pushing them away. I don't need them. And when you push people back, what do they typically do? They start to pull you back in because you're detached. Okay. Now it's all in my tone. Because if my tone sounded like this, now, Sally, it can't be all doom and gloom over there. What do you like about XYZ product? That's not going to move them. Uh, John, I mean, you guys have been using them for the past three years. I mean, it can't be all doom and gloom over there. What do you like about what they're doing? Well, we like this. We like that. Okay, but I mean, it sounds like everything's 100% perfect. What would you change if you could? I mean, to me, it sounds like things 100% perfect. What would you change if you could? I mean, it's not 100% perfect. In what way? See what I just did there? Because I opened them up. By basically saying, like pushing them away. I mean, it can't be all doom and gloom over there. What do you like about what they're doing? Well, you know, it's not bad. We like this. We like that. And then I say, I mean, it sounds like everything's 100% perfect. That's the key word. 100% perfect. Nobody likes anything they've ever bought 100%. Do you? You know that Ferrari that you just bought? Maybe some of you. Six months later, when you take it in because a few of the tires have already, you put like 6,000 miles on it and the tires need to be replaced and each tire's worth 2,500 bucks. You don't like that, do you? See, there's always something that you buy or you have that you don't like. Eventually, you might love it the first day you buy it, but then you start not liking certain things. It doesn't mean you don't like everything about it, but there's always something you would change. Am I right? Would you change anything about your computer after a year? Would you change anything about the car you just bought six months ago or a year ago or two years ago? Would you change anything about the shoes you bought three months ago or the dress you bought 
Okay. If you're a female or the new pants you bought six months ago, anything you change about them now, more than likely, yes. Doesn't matter what it is, any product or service. There's always going to be something you don't like eventually. So by just be my me saying, it sounds like things are a hundred percent perfect. Guess what? They're going to push back and say, it's not a hundred percent perfect. It's not. What don't you like? And immediately opens up the prospect. Use that on an A-type personality with the right tone. And you're going to notice how they open up extremely quickly. Let's see if I have anything else for you that I'm going to show you. I actually did some of this training for um, a, a big, uh, well, a keynote this morning, but I wanted to use some of it for you guys here. Um, let's see. Anything else I want to show you guys there? Da, 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 da. I kind of already went over some of your tone. No, I think that's it. I think we're good. Okay. All right. So we're going to go live tomorrow. So make sure you're in our Facebook group tomorrow. On Wednesdays, we only go live. Every Wednesday, we go live with a client from a completely different industry. And we break down their sales process that we've trained them. And they let you guys ask questions. Now, to even be interviewed on these lives, you have to make at least $30,000 a month in commissions as a salesperson, okay? As a client. Most of them we interview make 40, 50, 60,000 plus a month in commissions in your industry watching me right now. So you might want to turn in to hear those interviews if you want to make that type of money. So that'll be tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern inside the Facebook group. So if you're on YouTube, LinkedIn, the Facebook business page or my personal Facebook, see the Facebook group, that little banner going underneath me here on my uh, on my desktop in purple, salesrevolution.pro. That's where you go. Uh, to find the Facebook group because we only go live on like IG, TikTok, um, YouTube and stuff maybe once a week at the very most. OK, it's mainly the Facebook group that we go live. So if you want to be in those interviews and stuff, you want to hear that and ask questions to top performing salespeople that we're training that are in your industry that are making five times more than what you are, maybe even more. You want to learn their secrets, retrain them. Make sure you join the free Facebook group salesrevolution.com pro. And that's where we even answer some of your questions as well. So I'm going to have Natalia or somebody in our team post the Facebook group link. Some of you asking for it here on IG and TikTok. So we'll post that in there for you. Go to salesrevolution.pro. Okay. If you're on YouTube, go to salesrevolution.pro. We don't go live on YouTube on Wednesdays for those client interviews. Okay. All right. Make sure somebody said, uh, let me get some honor before I say this to get the tone I right. Literally made me LOL. He is so gold. Anyone who just takes their sales up and they're saying, let me get a sip to get my tone around is, well, there you go. See, Zach's right. You want to have the right tone because your tone is how your prospects interpret the meaning behind everything you say. Right? Let me give you another example. If you're angry at something, this is outside of sales. If you're angry at one of your kids, or you're angry at somebody you love. If you use your hands like this and start yelling at them, that's going to be interpreted as that you're really angry at them and pissed off. But by me simply putting my hand over my chest and yelling at them causes them to feel I'm more disappointed in their actions, not angry. And you're going to get a whole different type of person communicating back to you by simply putting my hand on my chest rather than yelling like this. Try that. Okay. Just a little hack I gave you. All right. Now you're in sales, sales management. You want your teams to start acquiring these skills because what I show you in these reels, I can assure you what I show you in these lives is very basic. It's 0.00001% of the training that our clients go through in our virtual training platforms and our group training with myself in our entire sales training team. We have 140 some employees at this point on a small operation anymore. So you wanna start acquiring those skills. You wanna start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions with what you sell, or you wanna start making your first 15 or 20 or 30 grand every single month in your industry. Or if you're a bigger thinker and you're like, man, how do I get, how do I get the sales ability to make 40 grand a month or 50 grand a month with what I sell? Or if you're a business owner, you're like, how do we double revenue? How do we double profit margin? Like I'm tired of where my business is. I want to take it to the next level. Well, how are you going to take it to the next level if your salespeople have the same sales ability that's gotten you to the level you're at? How can you double that? It's going to be hard. Spend way more money in leads. Profitability goes way down. 
why not focus on getting your salespeople the right skill sets, the right sales ability to close way more of the people they're already talking to. That's where you make a lot of profit, especially as a salesperson or a business owner. So you want to start acquiring those skills, message me directly right now. So if you're on IG, Instagram, or TikTok, or LinkedIn, or the Facebook group Sales Revolution, or if you're in the Facebook business page or my personal Facebook, message me directly right now, okay? Either myself, one of my surrogates, my stunt dumbbells will message you back some different training options that we have for your industry. You'll even be allowed to meet with one of our account managers because we have like 27, 28 different sales training programs at this point. We don't have one or two training programs. And once they find out what you're currently making now in commissions compared to what you want to make in salary and commissions, okay, maybe what you're saying or not asking is triggering your prospects to run the other way. They'll know which training program to recommend to you that gets you the quickest amount of results the soonest, like very quickly. It all depends on your skill level that you have now and how advanced you're at. Because if you're making 30 grand a month or you're making 30 grand a year, we're going to put you in a different training program than we would somebody that makes 150 to 200 grand a year. Okay. And vice versa. All right. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, live in the Facebook group, salesrevolution.pro. Thank you, Quincy Miner, for putting that in there. One of my daughters works for the company. Been here for a long time. Quincy, you're doing a great job. We're proud of you. Love you. Anyways, everybody, see you tomorrow. Message me directly. You want to start acquiring those skills, that sales ability, if you want to make far more than you are now. Stay out of trouble. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Well done. Okay. YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook group, and business page. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you message me directly. You want to start acquiring those skills.